JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, man disarms rubber, hands over gun to cops. The police are reporting that a high point 9mm Luger pistol with a magazine containing three 9mm cartridges were handed over to the Savlamar police following an incident at a bar in Darlestown, Westmoreland, on Thursday. Reports from the Savlamar police are that about 9 30 pm, a gunman approached another man and pulled a gun. The other man grabbed the gun and a toss ensued, during which the gun fell to the ground. The gunman ran from the bar and escaped. The police were summoned and upon the arrival, the gun was handed over to them. Investigations are ongoing. Integrity Commission denies Glenn Brown Lawrence of fraud and corruption charges. The Integrity Commission of Jamaica ICJ on Friday distanced itself from news that Jamaica Labour Party GOP Councillor Kim Brown Lawrence has been cleared of fraud and corruption charges. Brown Lawrence, counsel for the Brownstone Division, made the revelation at the monthly sitting of the St. Anne Municipal Corporation meeting on Thursday. She disclosed that she is now free from charges in relation to the Caribbean Maritime University CMU scandal. I want it to be known that I was cleared yesterday by the Integrity Commission, she said. But the Integrity Commission, in a statement on Twitter, stated that they were not the commission named in the report. There appears to be a news report that is circulating which claims that a named parish councillor has been cleared of fraud and corruption charges by the Integrity Commission. The Integrity Commission of Jamaica is not the Integrity Commission that is named in the report, the tweet read. Brown Lawrence was arrested on charge in October 2019 during an early morning raid of her house. It had been alleged that Brown Lawrence received and used CMU funds to fix roads in her constituency. Also charged with CMU President, Professor Fritz Pinnock, former Education Minister Royal Reed, Reed's wife Sharon and their daughter Sherelle. Man shot dead in Negril. A man is dead after he was shot several times by his attacker in retreat, Little London, Westmoreland this morning. The identity of the deceased has not yet been released. The police's Corporate Communications Unit, CCU, confirmed the incident on Friday afternoon. Unconfirmed reports are that the deceased man was at his male friend's yard with a mechanic when a motorcycle drove up. The men came off the bike and told the now deceased man and his friend that their bike was developing problems. When the mechanic walked off to retrieve his tools, one of the men pulled a gun and shot the now deceased man several times and he fell to the ground. It is said that the attacker then went over him and pumped several more shots into his body. The men escaped on the motorbike. The injured man was rushed to the Savlamar Public General Hospital, where he was later pronounced dead. Chopper songs blamed for scamming surge. The glorification of chopping in popular dancehall songs is being blamed as a factor, fueling the rise in lottery scamming in Western Jamaica. Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP Paula Llewellyn, who made the pronouncement, said it is also troubling that many youth have shunned formal employment preferring scamming as the holy grail. She noted, too, that women and entire households are turning to their lowering get-rich scheme. While delivering the keynote address at the Jamaica Bankers Association and the Jamaica Institute of Financial Service Anti-Fraud Seminar at the Terranova Hotel Thursday, the island's chief prosecutor shared that of the 110 new matters listed in the Westmoreland Circuit Court's Easter term, about 80 were for charges of possession of identity information. And when you saw some of the young people coming before the court, and women too, and you realize, based on my dialogue with the investigating officers, that you have whole families, you have young people who no longer aspire to a profession or vocation. Their aspiration is to be a chopper, Llewellyn said. And then you have the culture, the music in some respects, and I'm going to say it and confront it. The music that has been played and sung by young people glorifies chopping, which is to become a scammer. Can you imagine? She asked, the DPP charge that the songs legitimize the multi-billion dollar transnational crime, the proceeds of which help finance the procurement of illegal guns and ammunition. Scamming warlords are often engaging in conflicts over lead sheets, clients, and money, which plays out in brazen killings. Though not offering data, the DPP said that identity theft was on the increase and presented a real concern, especially in epicenters of lottery scamming such as St. James, Trelawney, and Hanover. 
There's also an insidious rise in the incidence of scamming in St. Elizabeth, she said. The near two-year hiatus from physical classes resulted in a psychological shift for many students who now validate hustling, using computers to make quick money. Combating that mindset and refocusing the youth on good citizenship, she suggested that financial institutions collaborate to sponsor a vigorous public education campaign. We have to find a way to reorient a lot of young people to the value of real work, said Llewellyn. You have to take the fight. You have to wrestle with the conscience and the lack of proper moral compass of a lot of our young people. You have to help to neutralize the songs that are celebrating chopping, and I think this is part and parcel of your responsibilities. Mechanic allegedly found with Glock pistol on the car seat. A mechanic has been charging connection with an illegal gun that was allegedly found inside a vehicle during a stop and search operation in Lizard Town, Spanish Town in St. Catherine on Wednesday, July 13. Charged with illegal possession of firearm and illegal possession of ammunition is 28-year-old Omar Murray of Palm Crescent in Fraser's Content, Spanish Town, St. Catherine. Reports from the Spanish Town Police are that about 12.05 a.m., a team of law enforcers on an operation stopped the driver for white tail to ask the motor car and conducted a search. During the search, a Glock pistol fitted with a magazine containing 8.40 mm rounds was reportedly found under the driver's seat. Moore was subsequently arrested and was charged following an interview. His court date is being arranged. Contractor faulted for a shock death. Months after Jamaica Public Service JPS contractor died, after being electrocuted in Trenchtown, the power company is reporting that protocols were breached in the execution of his duties. The revelation was made on Thursday by a senior vice president for energy delivery, Blaine Jarrett, who said that that was one of the conclusions of an internal investigation. However, he declined to share additional information, stating that the incident may become a legal matter. In this particular case, this individual was trained and about two months before given a refresher. What we have seen in our investigation so far is that protocols were breached, he said. The contractor, Ainsley Scott, was responding to a customer issue in the community when the February incident occurred. Residents reported that Scott was seen on fire atop a utility pole, hanging helplessly upside down. He was rescued by a resident, but died days later at hospital. Scott, who is employed by Emondo Traders, was one of the JPS's emergency response contractors. The business is owned by a policeman and a barber, according to company's Office of Jamaica Records. Five-day ultimatum for St. Anne's Bay Mayor. St. Anne's Bay Mayor Sidney Stewart has been given five days to resign or face a no-confidence motion that appears to be gaining support even from discontented members of his Jamaica Labour Party, JLP majority, in the St. Anne Municipal Corporation. The JLP owes an 11-5 majority of the People's National Party, but councillor for the Beach Town Division, the PMP's Ian Bell, who is leading the fight, is expressing confidence that the mayor will soon be out of office. Bell had indicated that the motion would be tabled at Thursday's meeting, but said it was advised to offer the mayor the opportunity to resign. If the resignation is not tendered by the 19th, we are going to be calling for a special sitting of the council where we will be moving the no-confidence motion against him, Bell said. Amid the growing dissent, Stuart went on sick leave on Wednesday and will return to work next week. Stuart took over as mayor in July 2020 after the resignation of then-Mayor Michael Bell Navis, who was felt by allegations of abuse of office, although he rejected claims of wrongdoing. Current allegations against the Stuart-led corporation include a charge by the Jamaica Public Service Company, JPS, that utility poles used by the corporation to install lights at the Buckfield Plainfield in Ocherius were stolen from the company and that the lights illegally connected. Councillors reportedly became upset after it was revealed that Stuart was in dialogue with the JPS with a view to settling the matter by paying an amount not yet agreed to by both sides even without the full knowledge of the corporation. Signs that the mayor was losing the support of the JLP councillors became even more noticeable days after last month's general council meeting when exchange representative Ian Isaacs resigned as chairman of the Commercial Services Committee and as acting chair of the Human Resources Committee, citing dissatisfaction with the running of some affairs of the corporation. Asked yesterday 
He feels ready to support the no-confidence motion. Isaacs referred to his resignation letter. I can say to you that my position about the whole situation is in black and white. That means that the mayor is in receipt of a letter. The CEO is in receipt of a letter also, Isaacs said. And in sports news, Jamaica qualifies after a mix 4x400. Jamaica have qualified for their first final at the World Athletics Championships in Eugene, Oregon. Running in E2 of the 4x400-meter mix relays, the Jamaican team of Demish Gay, Ronisha McGregor, Karame Bartley and Tiffany James clocked 3 minutes, 13.95 seconds, to secure the third and final automatic qualifying spot. The heat was won by the Dominican Republic in 3 minutes, 13.22 seconds, while Ireland was second in 3 minutes, 13.88 seconds. Gay opened with a 46.22 second opening leg to give the Jamaicans the slimmest of leads. McGregor, running the second leg, seemed to be holding that lead until the final few minutes when a late charging field caught her, leaving Bartley to fight his way back from third place. McGregor's leg was clocked at 51.90, while Bartley made a last push to find himself second when he handed over to James on the final leg. James clocked 50.06 to bring the Jamaicans over the line in third. All of the qualifiers came from a fast heat one, where the United States, 3 minutes 11.75, the Netherlands, 3 minutes 12.63, Poland, 3 minutes 13.70, Italy, 3 minutes 13.89, and Nigeria, 3 minutes 14.59, were the first five across the line. The 4x400 mix relay final takes place tonight at 9.50 p.m. World Athletics Championships in Eugene to offer largest prize purse ever. Jamaica's athletes can earn a bounty from the World Athletics Championships, which is underway at the Hayward Field in Eugene, Oregon. The 2022 World Championships will offer the largest prize purse in the event's history. The organizing body, World Athletics, has increased its monetary share from the 2019 event in Doha, Qatar, which saw athletes receive 7.53 million US dollars. Individual winners at this world championship will collect 70,000 US dollars, second place, 35,000 US dollars, third place, 22,000 US dollars, fourth place, 16,000 US dollars, fifth place, 11,000 US dollars, sixth place, 7,000 US dollars. 7th place, 6,000 U.S. dollars, and 8th place, 5,000 U.S. dollars. Should a Jamaican break a world championship record, they'll be eligible for a special award of 100,000 U.S. dollars offered by TDK and World Athletics. The potential for the Jamaicans to earn will continue in the relay events, with World Athletics offering 80,000 U.S. dollars for the victors, 40,000 U.S. dollars for second, 20,000 U.S. dollars for third, 16,000 US dollars for fourth, 12,000 US dollars for fifth, 8,000 US dollars for sixth, 6,000 US dollars for seventh, and 4,000 US dollars for last place. Canada Black Reggae Girls 3 0. Jamaica's hopes of qualifying for the 2024 Olympic Games were dashed with their 3 0 defeat at the hands of Canada in the semi final match at the CONCACAF Women's Championship on Thursday night. Two headed goals by Jesse Fleming and substitute Alicia Chapman in the 18th and 65th minutes, and another by Adriana Leon in the 77th, propelled Canada to the final. Canada will meet the United States, who blanked Costa Rica 3-0 in the other semi-final in the championship decider on Monday. Jamaica and Costa Rica will play off for the third spot in the curtain raiser also on Monday. The winner of the championship will advance directly to the 2024 Olympic Games in Paris, while the loser will meet the third-place team next year in September for the second CONCACAF Olympic spot. Coach Lauren Donaldson made four changes to his last starting team, resting skipper Khadija Shaw, who was nursing a knock. Shaw was replaced by Kayla McCoy. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.